You're back. I'm back. We're back? We're all back. I don't know. Anyways, everyone's doing good, but that's not what this video is about. What's the biggest fear that we have in the aquarium hobby that could happen to our fish rooms? Could it be our fish dying? Fish getting sick? It's probably your fish dying. And if I'm wrong, let me know in the comments section below. At the end of the day, I have a problem in my fish room or had a problem in the fish room. I took this footage over the course of the last month on my cell phone. I went through it kind of quickly on my phone just because when it initially happened, I was so freaked out by it. I didn't think about going to grab my actual Canon camera, my full frame camera, I guess you could say. And I just grabbed my cell phone and started filming. So let's start the footage now. We'll go through it together. And at the end of the video, I'll give you my non scatterbrained method of treating it, how you can treat it if it run, if you run into it in your fish room and well, enjoy the video. So we've got ourselves into a problematic situation and I've nailed down the cause. However, it's still a problem. As you can see, tank is being drained completely. Only a few inhabitants in here. Ones that look like they're going to be okay. However, they're going to be treated regardless. But the ones that are affected, well, not all of them are affected. The waru is not affected. The majority of the geos are not affected, but there are two geophagus in here that have hole in the head. There's one right there. And in the back corner there. I am catching it rather early from what I hope, but this is a problem. And they're now in this hospital tank and I have moved the fire eel out of there and I will be moving the catfish out of there as well and moving them into the 125. Um, but drastic times call for drastic measures and I'm acting right away. So as you can see though, the hole in the head at the top there is pretty new, but at the end of the day, hole in the head is still bad. Now, a lot of the times people like to panic and they think, oh my God, I got a hole in the head, it's fatal, all my fish are gonna die. That's not always the case. I have medication on order, you have rock salt. I'm going to be treating this tank and doing water changes every single day. In Canada, we do not have access to medication. I have to order it from the United States, either cross the border, go pick it up, or get it shipped to my house from amazon.com and hope to God it crosses the border and makes it. So in the meantime, we're gonna make do. There's the one with the worst. You can see there, it's good enough. Yeah, definitely the worst. Walru is absolutely fine. There's nothing on the Walru whatsoever, but they are pretty sensitive, so I'm gonna treat him as well. And ultimately, I'm gonna treat everybody, but these guys in here are the culprits. So we're gonna go hard on them. And again, four of them don't have it. Only two are showing signs. However, hole in the head is contagious. So every single fish in the same tank must be treated. Now I wanted to grab my phone and start filming right away. So I'm not on my actual camera, but I am on my phone. And uh, today's Sunday, October the 29th. We're gonna document this together. Hopefully I win. Um, I'm, I'd like to think that I'm going to win and uh, we'll see what happens. Fingers crossed, we can get through this together. So it's been two days since the first update and I've moved them over to this tank right here. And I'll show you what I've been doing, what I've been treating them with, and we'll kind of just go from there. But as you can see as well, I'm doing a water change on this tank. The key is ultra clean water. Um, I have moved the fire eel to this tank. I have treated this water. I've medicated food. Everybody is being treated. Uh, the Jaguar is still in there. Fire eel has been moved in there. Uh, tiger shovel nose has been moved in there. Big plecos in there, all the plecos are in there, and I moved the archer as well. But the geos. So treating with Pimafix and Melafix just to be safe. 
and I'm also uh, medicating their food. Uh, the Walrus in here and all the Geos. Walru is showing no signs of hole in the head whatsoever. Let's see if we can get him. So you can see the hole in the head right there. There's some right there. Um, he's probably the worst infected, but you know, we got some right over here. They don't have any symptoms or signs whatsoever yet. That's the worst one over his eye right up there. And then this guy right here. Uh, let's see if I can zoom out. Yeah, so he's got it, as you can see right there, um, and a couple other spots as well. So we are treating it. The key is, again, ultra clean water. So what I've done is thrown some Epsom salts in there just to help their digestive system. Treating with Metroplex. Metroplex is the medication um, for hexameda, hole in the head, um, and other um, parasites. Uh, Focus binds the medication to the food, and then to keep everything palatable, garlic guard. So I've already medicated their food. They've had two shots of the Metroplex. I did some yesterday and I gave them some today. So I'm doing about 30% water changes every single day. Just keeping that water extra clean. But they are all still eating. I'm not having one fish that doesn't want to eat. They're all doing extremely well in terms of their appetite. However, we're just trying to get rid of this. And, and treating hole in the head is a very slow battle. Um, I'm also going to be uh, prazi proing the tank as well. This will help from flukes or anything else that might be on there. I just want to kind of take care of everything all in one shot and make sure I kind of get it out of their system. But the Epsom salts is crucial and obviously the fish medication as well. Day three. And again, this tank's still getting water changes daily as well, uh, 20 to 30%. Although no fish in here is showing any signs whatsoever. But as you can see, the Pima fix, Melifix, all running through the tank there. So it looks really cloudy and there's stuff all over the glass, as you can see, which makes it look even worse. But again, at the end of the day, that's what it is. So there you go. You can see one right there as well. So those are the two that are really infected with it. Fine. Four of them are fine, so... Yeah, so that's it. Stay with me and um, let's cure this together. I'll check back in with you in a few days and see how it's going from there. But this is not an easy battle. Um, it's relatively easy. It's just a long battle. So when you're battling this, you just got to have patience. You got to give it time. And you will most likely see some scarring from your fish as well if they do make it through it. So um, the two, they look like they're going to make it. However, at the end of the day, I'm just concerned about them, A, keeping their appetite, B, keeping them in really clean water, loading it with salt. Um, one tablespoon to two tablespoons per 10 gallons is what I like to do of water. That's a 75-gallon quarantine system. So um, been, I, the first day I did two tablespoons of uh, rock salt per 10 gallons. So do the math on that. You'll know what you need to do. Um, however, the general recommendation that you're going to find online is uh, one tablespoon per uh, 10 gallons, which I'm doubling up. I'll eventually go down to uh, one tablespoon per 10 gallons. And, and uh, we're going to probably be treating these guys for, I'd say, at least a few weeks. It's kind of like when your doctor prescribes you medication. The, the, the illness is probably cleared up in, let's just say, a week, but he's prescribed you 14 days of medication. Well, that's what we're going to continue to do, it's just kind of like any other illness. Um, over treat and uh, ensure it's gone, but don't panic. And I forgot to add, I know why. I have activated carbon in this tank. I've since taken it out. Activated carbon with cichlids is typically uh, a primary cause of hole in the head. And if I don't know if I mentioned it in an earlier um, take that I shot or on the first day when I found out that they had uh, hole in the head, but there was activated carbon in the aquarium. so. That's been removed. Now we're back. It's time for the final update. As you can guess, I've treated it and I was successful. What I used again was Metroplex, Focus to bind the medication to the food, and I even went a step above at the very end and treated with Prazi Pro. Now, I didn't, I noticed in the videos that I was taking on my cell phone that I didn't really go over my feeding regimen how many times I treated, all that other stuff. I fed them this once a day 
for 10 days and I did water changes every day for the first week and a half. And then after that, I went to water changes every three days. I have no problems with my water here. And it, again, it wasn't my water that caused this issue. It was actually activated carbon in my aquarium. So now that you've watched the video, you can do the same and not panic that your fish are going to die or whatever the case may be, if you get to it in time and you treat it accordingly, your fish will be fine. Now, however, there could be scarring. And if there's scarring, that's just a part of the game. Anyways, long story short, it's time to show you the fish. Here they are. Look at them, aren't they beautiful? So everyone's good, and as you know, you could tell, he, the tiger shovel nose, he was in that aquarium, this aquarium over here, for 98% of the time. They've actually been okay for quite a while. So I moved him back in here with them temporarily, and the tiger shovel nose is actually going to go in, and I'll show you the... 335 gallon aquarium, but that's for another video. Now we're going to put the geos and the walru back in this aquarium. And I will also add that I did treat this aquarium as well. So every fish that was with the geos was treated as well. So if you have fish in there with your fish that have hole in the head, You best be treating it. All right. So I propped you guys up on my little makeshift bar table that I've made. Anyways, let's get moving the geos back into the 125. Oh, yeah, baby. They're in. Let me show you them right now. Check this out. Everyone is in. Now, they're a little shocked at first, obviously, but they'll be all right. A little stressed out. But everyone's good. Everyone's good. Everyone's good. We're back. The 125 is back, baby. So now I'm just going to turn the light off. Naturally, after you move fish for a bit. Turn the light off. The redheads will be all back to normal tomorrow. They'll be happy. I'm sure they're happy to be back in the 125. But, man, like. It's so good to have a full aquarium again. And truthfully, like, I don't know what I want to do with this tank. Like, I kind of wanted... I'd love to have Spenai in here. Geophagus Spenai. Um, in this aquarium. Look at, look at the Royal Blue. Like, oh, isn't he gorgeous? Man, did they ever create a lot of poo, though. Look at that. Right on the fire. Anyways. Anyways. Everything's back. We're rocking, baby. Geos are back in the 125. And just like that, everybody, that's it for this video. If you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If it helped you in any way down the road or helps anybody down the road someday, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching this video and supporting my channel. And I don't know. Y'all have to wait for the next one. Wait. I forgot to show you something. And it's only going to be really, really, really quick. Okay, I'm looking there yet. That's for a future video. Now, it's officially, it's time to go. See you in the next one.